And with this, a uh, very interesting question is this. Is AI a threat to your job? Now, 63%, 63.6% says after the introduction of ChatGPT in 2022, there have been some changes in the developer ecosystem. And then based on that, I do get questions on, on YouTube, maybe offline or in the live courses. And normally I give the answers there, but then I wanted some proof, you know, some data. And we got the Stack Overflow Developer Survey 2025, which answers most of those questions. So let's go through them. And again, I'm not going to cover everything in this survey. You can, uh, you can go here and understand everything. My focus is mostly for the developers and for the people who are learning here and for the people who are scared of AI. Okay, so let's get started. Now, this is a survey which came somewhere in July 2025. It's not exactly new, but talks about 2025. So if I click on methodology here, so this is the, the survey date. So it started from uh, this date to this date. And uh, they have collected data from almost 49,000. So mostly these are developers. So 49,000 developers, I can say approximately. And uh, let's see what other things we have to talk about. The first thing we'll talk about is again, the hype of this year or the real technology actually, it's AI. So we have this a uh, trust paradox. So of course, AI is claiming a lot of things. It is changing a lot of things, but the question is, do we trust it? And that's where let's head towards this data. Now, this is the sentiments and usage for AI. So AI tools in the development process. And if you look at it, of course, there are a lot of people, 47% people are saying they use AI tools on the daily basis. So it says 84% of the respond respondents are using and planning to use AI tools and that has been jumped. So last year it was 76%, this is 84%, that's great, right? But if you look at the sentiment, the positive sentiments of our AI tool have has decreased in this year because we are not trusting AI that much. Maybe it is not giving the right solutions or something, but we'll talk about those things later. But there have been some changes. The thing is, at this point, we are treating AI as a junior developer who can make mistakes. So it's a job of the senior developers to correct it and maybe to guide it to do a proper job. The next part is, can AI handle the complex task? See, the moment we have a new tool, we got a wipe coding concepts, what we do is we build simple applications, you know, and then AI excels in that. So you write a prompt, it gives you the entire application in whatever ID you prefer. And then you run it, maybe you will have some bugs, but you will solve it and it, you, you feel it's working. But see, when you talk about the industry, when you talk about the entire world, it is running on the complex software. Can it handle? So can AI handle the complex part? Now, if you talk to the professional developers, this is what they are saying. So only 3.9%, so approximately 4% are saying it can handle the complex task. But I, I feel it's more about the prompt and more about the ability to debug the code given by the AI. So overall, uh, in 2024, 20 35% of the professional developers already believed that AI tools struggle with the complex task, but the number has been dropped. So a lot of people are preferring to use AI tool and they're saying it is getting better. And we can see that, right? So with the new models, they are getting better. But interesting part here is, yes, for the development, we are using AI and mostly we are using AI for this search for the answer. So if you want to know something, of course, you will use AI there. In fact, this is where I use AI, which is testing the code. So if I want to write a unique case, uh, unit test cases, I write, I ask AI to do that. Uh, but what about the deployment and monitoring? So people are not preferring to use that for deployment and monitoring. So yes, AI cannot directly replace uh, developers if that's the question and that's also a point for the last end of this uh, video but yeah we are just going down on this deployment and monitoring part uh, the next is about the languages and there's a debate you know from a long time from uh, last few years you know which is the best language and I, th I think at this point the question which language is best doesn't matter it's just that where are we going to use it and for which technology specifically for AI there's a growth in Python and there's a 7% growth but the other languages are stable uh, example Java C sharp holding that 30% 30, uh, 30 position there yeah it changes on which level you are for professionals they there's the stats if you're learning to code it might change, but I always always believe in the professional developers because they are working in the industry. They're not going with the hype. 
but yes, JavaScript is there because, of course, JavaScript is getting used everywhere, front-end, uh, back-end, uh, mobile development. So, yes, there's a growth there. But Python, because of the AI, uh, it's growing day by day. So that's about the languages, right? But what about databases? See, for languages, it's it's easy to answer depending upon where you want to work. But in terms of databases, I was a big fan of MySQL way back. But from last few years, I'm using Postgres. Doesn't matter for teaching, for development, everywhere I'm using Postgres. It was difficult for me to explain why it is good. But now we got a stats. So this is the databases. And look at the Postgres usage. It's, it's almost 60% compared to other things. Uh, so MySQL is next. It's just that after Oracle bought MySQL or the Sun Microsystem, they're not doing much with the MySQL. So I prefer Postgres or MariaDB in the relational database world. Okay, next thing we have is the community. So where exactly uh, developers are interacting? So of course, the major part is Stack, o Stack Overflow, maybe because this is uh, submitted on Stack Overflow. So people who use Stack Overflow are answering here. Uh, but I don't believe the first part. But even if you're using Stack Overflow, the next comes is GitHub and then YouTube. So YouTube is still the leader in uh, as a community. So if you are learning things on YouTube, you're still doing a good job and you're doing a good job watching this video till this point. So yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. Doesn't make sense, but I wanted to show you. You are on the right platform. Next interesting part is a role. See, when you talk about the IT or software development as a, as a industry, and then when you talk about the roles, there are a lot of roles available, right? And normally, if someone is asking a question, we might say, go for full stack development or backend development or frontend development. But then what happens is, of course, once you grow in your career, you will look for other parts. But few people, they get stuck in these levels. They don't look for the next level. And this year, they have added a new role for the architect and there's a jump in architects as well. So I think it's time, once you join a company, once you are a developer, explore other things as well, specifically software architecture and learn system design. And you can learn it from the Telisco channel as well. We are coming up with a series on system design on the Telisco Alien soon, the Hindi channel. Check that out. So yeah, I would recommend explore that. The package is better. And with this uh, very interesting question is this. Is AI a threat to your job? Now, 63%, percent 63.6% says no. But then last year, it was 68%. So yes, there have been less confidence for developers now because AI is improving. But a lot of people still believe it cannot threat your job. And the beauty is a lot of people are actually using, a lot of developers are actually using AI to increase their productivity and enhance their software capabilities. So it's time to learn development properly. It's time to use AI tools. And most important thing is if you are still preferring to do wipe coding where you build a project and then it gives you something, see, it can do that for you. It will give you some code. And most of the time, the code is right. It's almost right, but not 100%. And to solve that few percentage of bugs, you need to know coding properly. You need to know uh, frameworks properly. You need to understand what is happening behind the scene. So don't run away from the foundations, learn them properly, and then use AI to increase your productivity. But don't actually jump into building application just because ChatGPT or Gemini will help you there or maybe Copilot, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's about this survey and I hope I was able to answer most of your doubts, which normally comes in the YouTube comments. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. I will try to answer them maybe by making another video. So thank you so much. See you in the next part.